Welcome back to Daily Devotions from Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Andrew Howe. It's a joy to be here with you this week as we continue our journey uh, during these daily devotionals through uh, to continue our journey through the book of Exodus. Uh, today we're going to cover one of the chapters that uh, this uh, that is known for uh, this book. What is what is known for is really uh, basically the the Passover, uh, uh, an event that really. Uh, marks and secures the identity of the Israelites, um, the Hebrews in the Old Testament. Uh, the Passover was the precursor to the tenth and final plague. Uh, in Exodus chapter 12, uh, as the last time we talked about Exodus chapter 11, uh, we are taking a look at the, the promised tenth plague and how Israel was to prepare for that event. This event um, becomes uh, very much of their life together. It's, it's something that would carry them through uh, the remainder of the Old Testament. With, Old Testament, with a few exceptions, uh, there was a time uh, during the exiles where the, the, uh, the Passover celebration would have been suspended. Uh, but upon return um, to Jerusalem and rebuilding later on uh, the, the temple and, and, and the walls around the city, um, the Passover would have been re reinstituted. And obviously we know in the life of Christ uh, that the Passover was celebrated uh, several times. And, and those are significant uh, events to detail the chronological events uh, of Christ's uh, own uh, life and ministry. Uh, but today we take a look at the Passover. And uh, if you're not familiar with the Passover, the Passover was this. Basically, God uh, commanded Moses and Aaron and the Israelites to take uh, a lamb without blemish. And uh, they were instructed to not break any of the bones of the animal. Um, and basically that lamb, uh, the blood from that lamb, uh, they were to take hyssop branches and, and paint the posts of their homes um, so that the angel of death during the 10th plague uh, would, would pass by, uh, literally pass over um, and strike down the Egyptians so that uh, the people of God could be released from their life of slavery and death and uh, even uh, their life stuck in sin, if you will, uh, to be redeemed uh, by the hand of God, to be sent out into the wilderness uh, so that he might take them eventually to the promised land. But this is an event that basically is, is the new beginning, the new year uh, for the children of Israel in the Old Testament coming from the book of Exodus chapter 12. And this is, this is something that they were supposed to remember. Uh, they're remembering a, a crucial part. God is saving them from their life of slavery. And what a tremendous thing that is. And that really carries them. Uh, they were, they were to, to share this event with their families, to pass down uh, this legacy that God uh, had saved them. And the unique thing is uh, God has saved us. And as God was using in the Old Testament, the Passover, to set up uh, the beautiful, the spiritual Israel uh, that we see in Christ and the, and the life that Christ brings into this world um, is, you know, the 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 day that Christ was uh, put on the cross and the week that he came in riding on Jerusalem is they were all getting ready for the Passover. And for Jesus to come into Jerusalem and to, to carry himself that first Holy Week um, is really setting up what he gives us on a regular basis in our church is the body and blood um, that, that saves us from our sin. It, that means of grace, that vessels, uh, that vessel of God's uh, grace uh, in our hands and in our mouth uh, as we confess Jesus as Lord. And, and Christ institutes uh, that uh, bread and wine in, with, and under his body and blood as he celebrated that Passover meal with his disciples. And then ultimately we know, uh, just as his cousin John the Baptist in the first chapter of John, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, uh, Jesus has done that. And uh, uh, the, the punishment for sin, death, and the power of the devil uh, has been paid for uh, through Christ's blood, that sacrificial lamb 
Uh, he was that lamb without blemish. Uh, the unique thing of connecting the Passover to Jesus is, I don't know if you uh, recall, but uh, when Christ is on the cross, and uh, you know, obviously the, it's the middle of the day, um, and uh, the darkness is coming over like it's night, and uh, the Romans try to expedite the deaths of the criminals on the cross. And uh, they, break, they start breaking the criminals' legs. And uh, basically, to fulfill the prophet Isaiah, uh, they get to Jesus, and he's already dead, and so they don't break his legs. Uh, part of that is the Messiah uh, is uh, now the Passover lamb um, who takes away the sin of the world. And what a blessing that uh, we are now part of that covenant with our Almighty God. I do want to share a few verses towards the end of the chapter, and beginning at verse 26. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service, referencing uh, this event of the Passover? You shall say it's the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, for he passed over the house of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians but spared our houses, and the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Then the people of Israel went and did so, as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. This is a defining moment in the Old Testament. This is a defining moment in the book of Exodus. This is where God literally sets his people apart in the world. He brings his justice upon Egypt, and he saves and redeems. That's really the, the, the type or of what we call in biblical theology of, of the precursor to what Christ accomplishes for us in our lives as his dear children. We have been claimed and chosen in our baptism, and our baptism really takes us back to the cross, uh, the life of Jesus, uh, the cross, and certainly the empty tomb as we're joined to Christ's life, death, and resurrection. And so when we come to the Lord's table to receive the body and blood, the bread and wine of Christ in Holy Communion, we're receiving uh, from God himself uh, that which he desires to remind us that he has passed over our sin. He has cleansed us, he's claimed us, and he sends us out in his name, forgiven, washed clean, uh, nourished with his heavenly meal, that Passover meal which is ours, uh, and it's a beautiful reminder uh, of Christ being fully present in that meal with us. And we celebrate that on a regular basis in our church and in many churches and throughout time as we are joined uh, in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, as well as we join the church triumphant and the church militant uh, around the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Just a reminder that uh, as we live in this fallen world, uh, God is truly present in our lives. He's present in his word and he's present in his sacrament. And uh, he joins us together uh, to be his people. Will you join me in a prayer as we certainly lift up uh, people over in Israel? Uh, certainly we know that the true Israel is Jesus Christ, but we know that our neighbors uh, are in need of prayers of peace, but also that uh, that peace would come from God, uh, not from a nation, but from God, and specifically the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Lord God, Heavenly Father, I thank and praise you for this day as we reflect on who you are, that identity marker of setting us apart. And we've been set apart in the, in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit uh, claims us in the waters of holy baptism. I pray that we would always grow more uh, in under our understanding of your uh, sacraments, but also remembering that the precious body and blood of Jesus is given to us for the forgiveness of our sins and to remember that you uh, endured death so that the angel of death uh, might pass over us as well as freedom from our sin and the bondage of the evil one, Satan. I pray that you would bless and keep all wars in the world, that you would uh, bring them to an end, and that you would bring your peace through Jesus Christ alone. And it's his name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day in the Lord Jesus.